Oh, well, hello there. Well, welcome back to Drum Room Rescue, my series where I take a look at how I'm planning and designing the renovation of my drum room or my music practice space, which is actually right through this door. Uh, in the last couple of episodes, we took a look at some tools that you can use for general planning uh, and design. We also looked at sort of specialty topics like heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and also lighting. And so today, we're going to talk about doors. So obviously, there are many different types of doors. I just came through an exterior type door, and between my garage space and my drum room space is an interior door. Uh, doors can be made of all kinds of different materials. They can be different sizes. They can be different configurations. And when you're talking about acoustic control principles, the problem with doors is they essentially represent a hole between the inside and outside of your space. So how we take a look at that opening and how we manage how it's constructed in detail becomes very important in terms of acoustic control. So when we take a look at door design and detailing for spaces where we have sort of high level goals for acoustic control, there are three main ways uh, that it, this can be accomplished. Um, and I'll just to summarize them, kind of the first way is one large massive door, um, high mass, and then there's some very specific details in terms of ceiling. Another way is when you have your room within a room, you have a set of doors in each wall, the exterior wall and that interior wall, and that creates a double door uh, between the spaces in terms of acoustic control. And then there's a third way, which is sort of creating an ante room or a lobby space or an airlock so that you might have a door to you, the space that you're trying to have a high level of acoustic control that comes into say here in the garage um, or an entry lobby um, uh, or an inner lock of some sort. And that inner lock or space or lobby has its own door. So you still have that sort of double door effect, but there is obviously a space and an air volume between those doors. Now I know I went very quickly over the three general ways you can approach uh, door design for your space, um, but I think there's a couple of resources that do a good job of getting into the details a bit. Uh, one, obviously, is one that I've referenced a tremendous number of times, and that's Rod Gervais' book. Uh, and I would highly recommend that, and I don't necessarily want to give away all the information that he shares, because I, I think it's a very worthwhile resource, it's worth investing in, uh, and I think I would do a poor job uh, kind of trying to regurgitate a lot of the good stuff that he puts out. Um, but a second one that I thought was quite helpful uh, is this video. Uh, and this uh, YouTuber, you know, has a summary of those three ways we talked about, including some real world examples of how he did his door or his main entry door to his music studio, as well as some kind of lessons learned. So you, and it's not very long. You can walk right through it and see some great information. And again, uh, I think you, he probably does a better job of really getting in the details there. Uh, and I would highly encourage you to check that out. So step one, we're talking about how am I going to configure this? So for me, really, I'm in, we're in our garage space right now. I wanted to maintain the garage as a garage. So this is where I cut wood or I store stuff and tools and all that sort of thing. Um, so I didn't really want to try to make this kind of airtight or create a vestibule or anything like that. Uh, the other consideration for me is I didn't want to have to deal with a super heavy single door um, and do things like lead sheeting and some of those things, just the, the actual physical installation that seemed really difficult. So what I chose is to have the double door concept. So step one is the configuration. There are several types of doors available. The three main basic types are hollow core, solid core, and a solid wood type door. Um, for interior doors, probably the most common are this hollow core and solid core. Um, and this is an illustration of those two different door types. 
Well, you can see here the actual physical structure of the door, top rails, the style, and the bottom rail are basically the same. The big difference is inside the door itself. Inside a hollow core door, there's, there ain't a whole lot of nothing. Um, you know, these can be voids, there can be some other sort of material in here, but for the most part, this is like a light mass, uh, very lightweight material inside, uh, easy to move, easy to install, relatively inexpensive. And again, this is kind of more where you're just worried about or trying to install a physical barrier between two spaces that you're not as worried about acoustic control issues. On the solid cord side, inside the door itself, you have material. I mean, this could be a, this here is, has particle core, this can be like a composite material, or this can be sort of a particle board material. Um, but what the result is, on the left, a holocore door might be 30 pounds for a, sort of a 36 inch door. The solid core, you're probably 70, 80 pounds. Uh, and in terms of acoustic control, we talked about the importance of mass. So the solid core provides a lot more mass per square foot versus the hollow core. Uh, I guess one of the trade-offs is cost. Another trade-off is, is obviously as these doors get heavier, the, the more heavy-duty hinges that need to be installed and then obviously uh, ensuring that you have uh, the correct frame. Obviously, when we talk about just the door itself, the different options you could possibly have, like hollow core, solid core, those types, they uh, really impact the mass uh, involved here. And we've talked about the importance of mass. And one sort of rule of thumb that I've gathered from various sources is ultimately what you're trying to replicate is trying to make the door assembly as massive, so pounds per square foot, if that's a, 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 a metric there, um, as your wall assembly. You're trying to prevent what we call flanking or having an alternative way that sound can escape or come into your space. So if I've spent time and energy detailing a wall assembly and building my mass spring mass uh, and all of a sudden say for example that's you know five pounds per square foot or whatever is just an example and then my door assembly is one pound per square foot or something you know this is obviously a weak point step two is probably selecting your door and i think i don't think you're going to get you won't you definitely won't get away with hollow core any sort of this application Commonly, you're going to use uh, solid core type doors uh, and you're trying to really replicate uh, or get as close to in your whole door assembly sort of the mass or pounds per square foot metric uh, between your wall uh, and your door assembly. So step two, selecting the actual type of door um, and I've selected solid core doors. So if we said step one was deciding the configuration of your door and step two was deciding what type of door, those are kind of big picture um, selections. You know, everything from there is really in the details. So if we take a look at this existing door, um, you know, obviously you can see a gap. There's, this, there's a gap all along this door. That's called the relief. So there will always be a gap of, between the door itself and the frame. The door frame is essentially the structural support that holds the weight of the door and ties it back into your wall structure. So if we open the door, so what we have here obviously is the finished wall. There's some casing. This is literally just a piece of wood that hides the door frame and the wall uh, intersection you have the door frame itself. Again, that's the structural connection uh, that supports the door and ties everything back to the wall structure. And then you have this door stop. And then this is a surface that mates with the door itself. Uh, but because we have this relief opening all around the door, uh, this door stop is a surface that is commonly used to try to help seal that gap. So prevent air from being able to pass between the door stop and the door itself and thus sealing that relief opening at the top. Um, so we put things like weather stripping or rubber or some other pieces here 
And that's really at the top and sides. Now, obviously, we have the bottom of the door. So if we take a look at this existing threshold, so that uh, border between the outside of, your sp of the space and the inside of the space, you can see here there's nothing. There's ju it's just the slab. You know, obviously, uh, these two spaces right now have the same type of flooring, aka no flooring. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a flush finish across. Uh, and that may be a configuration that you want to do for your renovation. You want, um, you know, even clean uh, across the threshold here, no barrier. Uh, and so what that does is that, you know, on the other sides of the door, we had spaces where we could put in weather stripping and some other pieces uh, to assist with sealing the air. Um, well, here we have nothing. So in that case, you have to look at the putting those things on the door itself. So one way this can be done, at least on this door here, uh, is putting in a door sweep. Uh, and this is a pretty basic type here um, for just a residential, very simple. Uh, and because there is no threshold here, what this is a, a piece of rubber essentially that's just nailed to the face of the door. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is to seal that space uh, between the door itself and the slab below. Um, arguably, this is a, probably just a very basic uh, effort, and there, from here, there are a lot of different ways uh, that you can do this. You can not only put in a sweep, various types, sizes, design features, uh, but you can have some uh, sweeps that are actually installed or mortised into the door itself, uh, and some of them are automatic, so as the door closes, there's a mechanism that pushes a sweep down and creates a better seal. You know, those are all different ways of ultimately trying to seal that, that gap between the door itself and the floor. Uh, and if we open this back up, you know, that, if that design condition is where you just want this to be flush across, you're probably going to have to do some sort of approach like that. So putting a sweep or a seal on the door itself. Another way to do it is actually installing a threshold, installing a physical uh, barrier here. And much like the door stops on the sides and top of the door, you can, there are several different types and designs available. And essentially you're creating that same door or that same door stop on the bottom. Uh, and that provides a surface where you can put in uh, weather stripping, or it might be something that it's integral, like an off-the-shelf type of threshold. And that will create another surface where you can have uh, an air seal there. So one of the key pieces when we're talking about acoustic control for a door assembly really has to do with how we're sealing that door opening. This is a company here called Pemco. They make uh, these acoustic seal sets. Another manufacturer uh, might be Zero International, and then there's probably a dozen or more other different manufacturers of various types of weather stripping or door sweeps uh, or various components to assist with sealing doors. But what I like about this manufacturer and the products they have is that they come in sets. Uh, and the way the sets are built up really have to do with what your goals are in terms of, of um, sound transmission class. This gets a little bit fuzzy because we're dealing with residential doors that probably don't have an actual STC rating. This chart is to sort of help you compare different acoustic seal sets and their performance, but it relates back to sort of the sealed in place door STC rating and a lot of these residential kind of Home Depot solid core doors, you're, you know, you're not going to get uh, a, an actual rating off of those. But this does tell you a little bit comparatively between these different sets. Now each one of these sets are made up of different parts and pieces, but they're really focused on what we were talking about. The gasketing, which is what is the device used to seal around the door stop. So that would be on the sides and the top. The door bottom, which could be a door sweep or other device that's actually physically installed to the door. 
the threshold, which is down at the floor level. So if it's a slab, it's on the, the concrete below or on the flooring below. And then all of them, or most of them, include the door corners. So where the door meets the corner of the framing. And each one of these sets here has different devices that can be used to uh, treat each of these surfaces in terms of acoustic control. And they really kind of go in sort of, I would say this first set really is uh, quite involved in terms of like automatic door sweeps that are installed inside the door, um, all the way down to this sort of last one, which is very basic uh, sort of things um, that can be installed. Um, and they're kind of varying cost, and then obviously various different detailing in, sort of in terms of their installation. So in thinking about how I was going to approach the ceiling of my doors, I liked that this manufacturer had a series of different sets, if you will, that you could choose from. And I kind of went through most of these sets and tried to see, it was a bit of a balance of cost, ease of installation, um, and a little bit of a comparison. It's a little bit sort of apples and oranges um, when trying to look at some of these charts. But, you know, trying to see a solution I thought was uh, suitable for my situation. And what I ended up choosing was the set 2D. And what 2D has, uh, if we start with this image on the left here, we have the header or the top and the sort of threshold or the bottom of the floor. Uh, on the floor here, there is a threshold that you purchase and it has essentially a raised section with uh, some rubber gasketing material. And that's where you're getting your sealed boundary here on the bottom of the door. So that's the space between the door and the floor. On the top, on the exist on the uh, door stop along the top here, you are screwing in uh, this framed gasketing material. So this is sort of a frame element, and then it has this gasket silicon gasket here with a bulb so that depresses and that creates a seal here uh, and then you also have these kind of small rubber pieces that are another boundary if you will between the door frame uh, itself and the door so you can see here on the right it's, it gives you a little bit better image at the bottom here you have the threshold on the door stop and then this door stop which is going to be similar to what it is across the top you're going to have the uh, rigid gasket or the framed gasket here then you have this sort of small section of rubber so then you essentially create a seal around the entire perimeter of the door at the bottom you have a threshold at the door stop you have a gasket between the door frame and the door, you have another rubber seal, uh, and this sort of gasket and seal configuration is also at the top. So for me, I think this was a pretty straightforward approach, uh, and it was the way I've chosen to approach sealing my new doors. So in terms of door hardware, this video series, Building a Professional Recording Studio by True Sound Studios, and this specific video, Part 14, Studio Doors, he goes over his decision in terms of selecting and detailing the hardware for his doors. And the approach he took was to kind of use this alternative hardware approach. He bought solid core doors, similar to what I did, and they were also slab doors like mine, meaning there are no hole, holes open for hardware or cuts for hinges, etc. It's just a, a solid core door. So in selecting hardware, the approach here is to try to maintain a continuous door assembly here and minimize penetrations. This is actually for a walk-in cooler or freezer. Um, the penetrations associated with this hardware are, are sealed uh, and they're actually relatively minimal. Um, this is a radial latch. What this also does, not only does it minimize the penetrations and the penetrations that are there are sealed, but this actually has a, a pretty tight forcing of the door against the door stops. 
So that kind of helps maintain or make sure that, that those boundaries or the, where your gasketing is, is nicely compressed uh, and it helps maintain that air seal. So here we can see uh, uh, some installation instructions for that walking cooler hardware. Uh, that company is called Kaysen. This is the model 58 safeguard radial latch. And that looks a lot like that picture I just showed you where you essentially have uh, the hardware, the handle, and the actual latching mechanisms, or the strike here. And uh, this handle piece gets installed on the door, and the latch itself gets installed uh, on the frame. So what you'll find with those walk-in cooler or freezer door hardware packages is that you need something on the inside of the door so that you can actually release the locking mechanism. And there's several ways to do that. Here's a couple here. On the inside face, you essentially have this, this sort of mushroom button. You depress that, there's a rod that pushes back in and opens the door. Uh, that's not uncommon in walk-in freezers and coolers. Some of them, are, you know, they can be recessed. Um, depending on the application, there's a couple of different ways. Ultimately, what you're trying to do is just push this rod into the door to release the latch. And there's on the interior, there's a couple of different configurations you can do. The mushroom button, this is essentially a tilting arm. You can also have this sort of lever to press. Um, but that means you still need, you have the latch and strike on the outside of the door and you need to have some sort of release mechanism on the inside of the door. So for my design approach, I've decided to use that Pemco acoustic seal set, and the set is set 2D. So on the threshold here at the bottom, we have that purpose-built threshold uh, with the stop and the gasketing. On the top, along the door stop, that would be on the top and on the sides as well, we have the framed gasketing that gets screwed into the door stop. And then for hardware, we have the, uh, this is the Kaysen 58 door latch and strike. And then on the inside face, obviously you need to have a way to open the door from the inside. You, we have the uh, release here or the mushroom button release. So overall, the way I've approached this door assembly design is to start with a massive door, solid core door a slab type, so there are no openings for handles, it's one solid door. Then to uh, select gasketing and seals that ensure a ceiling across the sides, top and bottom of the door. Uh, and then to also install door hardware that minimizes penetrations in the slab door, helps put pressure on the door itself against sealing materials like gaskets. Uh, and overall, again, the, the configuration is a double door. So really overall, this approach is similar to the walls. What we're trying to do is ensure we have sufficient mass in sufficient quantities and locations and that we're sealing as much as possible any openings between the inside of our drum space and the outside. Uh, and it gets a little bit more involved here because this is sort of a dynamic design element. This needs to open and close. I need to be able to use this, unlike the wall, which is essentially static. So really, I think here it just illustrates the fact that when it comes to doors and door assemblies, the devil is really in the details. I mean, we're down into dimensions of one sixteenth of an inch or one eighth of an inch, you know, and thinking about, okay, how is our door framing installed? How are we going to seal gaps between the framing of the door and the frame of the walls? Um, you know, what are we doing to ensure that any gaps between the door itself and the door stop or framing are sealed? How are we approaching that? What are we doing with penetrations uh, inside uh, in the door itself? Uh, and so, you know, I think again here, thinking about this beforehand, building it on paper looking at your options, I think that's going to give you the best outcomes so that when you get to site, you have a plan. Uh, and obviously as things come up, you can adjust, but at least you have some goals and some approaches thought of ahead of time. And I think that's going to give you better outcomes. 
So door design and detailing can be incredibly important uh, for providing good acoustic control. And really we talked about kind of three main steps. The first is deciding what sort of configuration you, is best for you uh, in terms of how the door is set up. And that can either be a single mass door, uh, a double door, especially with a room within a room concept, or possibly having some sort of interstitial space like a lobby, an airlock of some sort. Um, the second is actually the door itself. So thinking about the, the mass or the construction of the, of the doors themselves. And really the third is about uh, sealing. How do we seal this opening? And really, again, the devil is in the details here. Thinking about closing up gaps that are naturally created by the installation of the door. That would be the gaps between the door itself and the frame or the door stop uh, or the threshold at the bottom. And how you are purposefully uh, approaching those intersections and putting in things in the details that will help seal those. And again, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is to the best of your ability, make this as massive and as air sealed as your walls. And obviously there's a lot of challenges with that because you want to be able to continuously open and close these. Um, but thinking about how these are configured how they're constructed, and then how these uh, sort of gaps or openings are sealed is probably the best way to ensure that you get a good acoustic control from these doors assemblies and that you're avoiding flanking uh, or having sort of weak points in your envelope. So i uh, really like to thank you. Thank you for watching, and I hope this was beneficial for you. Um, it's about a week, a week until we start this project. Um, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, there'll be a couple more videos um, right when we're right in the heart of action and that we're, we're getting things done uh, and you can see how these things are done and how it turns out. Uh, and again, I'm sure, as I said in my very first video, I'm sure I'll screw a few things up uh, or learn some lessons, but uh, hopefully it'll be a good process and that there's a good product here. Uh, and what I've said in a lot of my videos, I think the real... One of the keys to that is really think, thinking ahead and trying to plan as much you, as you can, building on paper so that when you actually get out and start doing it, you know, some of these small two inch level details you worked out and you can approach those confidently when you're on site. So thank you once again for joining us.